Welcome to the Barack Obama Approved World's Greatest Podcast, Hyphen Nation. I'm your host, Kellen Conley. Today on Hyphen Nation, we're going to start out with an old favorite. That's right. It's time for the Morgantown Weather Report. Here we go. It's currently 61 degrees here in Morgantown. Uh, looks like it's going to be partly cloudy for the rest of the evening. Tomorrow, you can look forward to rain, more rain, man. High is going to be 63. Uh, looks like it's going to be a very rainy Friday. Rainy uh, October the 29th. And then at looking at your 10-day forecast, it's supposed to rain all weekend here in Morgantown. Little Seattle is in full effect. Uh, so, yeah, going to be bringing in November very wet. So, there's your Morgantown weather report. If you would like to uh, share your weather report with me, I'm, I mean, you can. I don't know. That didn't go anywhere. <laughs> oh, man. Welcome back, though. Good to be back. Good to have uh, gotten to talk about Derek last week like I planned. And now, I'm sitting here doing a solo pod which is what I told Marcus a few months ago I wasn't going to do anymore. But you know what? The show must go on, and I feel like I want to do the show because I love the show. So here we go. Today we're going to talk about music. We're just going to talk about a few albums that uh, I actually uh, listened to over the past few months. Let me go grab this prop right quick. If you're listening, watching on the YouTube, I mean, make sure you uh, give me a thumbs up. You can leave a comment. You can tell me your weather report in the comments on YouTube if you want. You can uh, you can also subscribe to the channel, Hyphen Universe. You can hit that bell so you never miss an upload. That'd be real cool. But yeah, uh, I need the visual aid because, of course, Hyphen Nation, when able, is a also a video pod. I put up last week's episode on my YouTube channel. Again, that's just hyphen universe for those of you out there who would like to see me sit in my basement in my Vegeta hyphen shirt that I got in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Uh, that, that'd be real cool. So when this album came out, and the album in question is King's Disease 2. When this album came out, I was like, man, you know what would be a real cool idea that I could do for a YouTube video? Because uh, I do YouTube videos now besides the pod. You know, just, just for fun, because I can't just do one thing really well. I have to do a bunch of things pretty good instead of honing in on that one thing other than music. I'm pretty damn dope with music. I was like, yo, you know, it'd be a real cool visual thing to do for YouTube. What if I just made a list of all of Nas's albums and just kind of talked about them real briefly and then and then kind of rounded it up to King's Disease. So since I never sat down to do that idea and I have this whole stack of paper that's been sitting here. Um, we're going to go ahead and get into it. So we're going to do a album by album review of Nas's discography, ladies and gentlemen. So get ready. 1994 Illmatic featuring Kid Nas on the cover. This is the heralded classic in Nas's catalog. Five mics out the gate. The thing that has been the gift and the curse, not to borrow from Jay, but to borrow from Jay at the same time in his career, the fact that his very first album was fire. And he's always had to try to live up to that album. Let me hold this up a little bit more. Hold it up backwards. Um, and, you know, with the album cover, it had uh, Baby Nas on there. And, of course, um, his album came out right before Ready to Die. And that led to Only on only, Be- only Built for Cuban Links. That led to the Shark Niggas diss, a skit where Ghostface and Ray were talking about niggas biting Nas's shit, talking about Biggie stealing Nas's album concept by putting uh, a a small black child on the front of Ready to Die because I don't think that was Biggie's baby picture. It was definitely Kid Nas on the front of Illmatic. But classic album, uh, Timeless, I didn't hear it until I was almost 21 years old because uh, I got in hip-hop game around 97, the hip-hop game. Uh, I really became a hip hop hit around 97 and started kind of catching up from there. And once the world of um, digital music and leaks and having access to what you wanted exploded pretty much around 2004 for me, then that's when I was able to catch Illmatic for the first time. 
um, that I, I really got to sit down and listen to it. Undisputed classic, though, right out the gate, uh, five stars. What what else can you really say about Omatic? So let, let's throw Omatic away. Like, I mean, I'm done talking about Omatic because there's nothing left to be said. It was written, 1996, featured a Nas in the, who, uh, a picture of Nas uh, as he was in 1996. This is the album that introduced Nas Escobar to the vernacular of hip-hop. Now, on this album, you either love it or hate it. I've met several people. I've seen several people online who love it was written. I know several people who were so let down by the fact it wasn't another Illmatic, but anybody who is a true critic or fan of music know that it's very difficult for an artist to be able to recreate their very... uh, recreate their first album and it'd be exactly the same, the exact same sounds, exact feeling. You've been writing your first, first album your entire life leading up to it. So you have all those experiences and everything that you can put into the album. Um, that That's just how it goes. Now, with your second album, you're pretty much trying to talk about how you're living now while trying to still connect to that same person you were who did their first album. So as far as it was written, it's a good album. It, um, me and Matt actually reviewed this on the Hip Hop Manifesto podcast some years ago. If you want to go to uh, anywhere podcast or podcast it and just look up Hip Hop Manifesto, we did and it was written versus uh, Reasonable Doubt episode where we reviewed both albums. And I remember back then, uh, and that's probably last time I listened to it, it was written in full. I didn't enjoy it was written as much when it was great. It was great, like um, I gave you power, obviously. Street Dreams, If I Ruled the World, uh, a lot of classic stuff. But then when you have a song like Nas is coming on there, Nas is coming, it, it's kind of hard to take it seriously. So uh, it was written was fine. So if, if uh, let's just do this out of five, let's just go by the mic system. Fuck it, the source ain't relevant anymore. So yeah, if it was, if Illmatic was a five, it was written was a three and a half for me. So it was written, gone. Next, 1997's The Album by the firm featuring the lineup of Nas, Foxy Brown, AZ, and stepping in for Core Mega, Nature. Now, I actually did a TikTok not that long ago about Nature's first verse on Band for TV, uh, or Band from TV, from Noriega's first album, N O R E, Niggas on the Run Eating. And that verse was just so impactful because it set off Nori's whole album and it set off one of the most iconic classic posse cuts of all time. Even in the moment of 98 when this was out, I knew this was one of the best posse cuts of all time. I was floored. So I kept sniffing around waiting for that nature joint to come out. I'm like, yeah, when's that nature album coming out? When's that nature album coming out? And I remember hearing the single, The Ultimate High was coming out and I remember, I remember getting downloading that and it had that, do you see what I see? And it's like, do you smoke what I smoke? And it, it wasn't what I wanted it to be. And I never ended up listening to the first Nature album. And honestly, I can't remember the last time I heard a Nature album. But this is the album that uh, Dr. Dre put together or helped put together the firm. It was supposed to be the super group to help establish Aftermath. I don't know. I can't remember if it came out on Aftermath. It may have. But, of course, it had uh, songs like Fir- Firm Biz, Firm, Firm Biz, with uh, Dawn Robinson from In Vogue on the hook. It had also Phone Tap was on there. Um, not a well-received album. I thought it was fine for the time. Uh, I mean, it was 97, so this came out shortly after it was written. And this is kind of in the middle of the Jiggy era really taking off for Bad Boy, the Shiny Suit era. So... With that being said, this album was kind of lost in the sauce where, again, diehard Nas fans who didn't love it was written, didn't want more, did not want to hear Nas like this. And then your fans of Nas who enjoyed it was written, wanted, they liked it, but it, it still wasn't a great album. So out of uh, uh, five mics, we're going to just give this a two. A two. I think a two is solid. So just had to throw that in there because I was trying to go chron- chronologically through his career. Now we come to 1999's I Am, previously called I Am the Autobiography. On the cover was Nas as he was at his age at the time, except he was he was dressed as a pharaoh. I don't I don't know if that was just 
uh, digital effects or if my man really painted himself gold and then they kind of put the pharaoh around him but this was my very first Nas album I'm sure I've mentioned it on the podcast before because I talked about Nas at least twice on here uh probably three times because of the whole Khalees situation um but I remember talking about him when I thought he had retired and he wasn't really gonna make a big deal about it and he was just going to quietly retire. And I definitely was talking a lot of shit about the Nasir album, which I still don't enjoy to this day. And we'll get to here shortly. It'll be very shortly. Uh, that I, It'll be a very brief section, but we'll get to it. I Am is one of my favorite Nas albums ever. And it's terrible. I know it. But since it was my very first album, and let me tell the story again, went to Costco Price Club with my dad was going through the music section, saw it came out. I had just read about Nas. I did a, read an interview in The Source. Um, they had this great cover. I believe the logo was purple, and Nas was in a wife beater. It had a black bandana. Uh, it was going through one of his um, one of his belt loops on his pants, and he kind of had his hands like in a praying sign, and you could see the, the, the chain behind him. And I read that interview, and I immediately was – I was – I was amazed by Nas because this is my first real experience of Nas. Like I kind of knew Nas. I knew if I heard, if I ruled the world and I didn't know Illmatic yet. So this is my first exposure to Nas. I was like, yo, Nas is so dope. Nas is so dope. Plus I saw the video for Nas is like top 10 Nas song. And I heard that and I was like, yo, that's dope. That, that is fire. And to this day, I still think it's one of the greatest rap songs I've ever heard in my lifetime. But on this album, there were songs such as You Won't See Me Tonight featuring the late great Aaliyah. Um, uh, what, what, he had a song with DMX on there. Uh, he had uh, We Will Survive, which was kind of about what up, big. I know shit was rough after you slid. You in God's hand now. You in God's hands now. Keep a place for me, kid. Um, Undying Love, a great storytelling song. One of the great storytelling songs in Nas's career is on there. And... Also, um, what was what was the DMX song? I'm, I'm thinking about the wrong song. Um, uh, I'm not looking up. I'm not looking up. DMX is on there. Uh, DMX steals a the show. There is a Doctor Knock Boots on there, which is a very funny song in the vein of um, Cashmere Thoughts. I kind of think by Jay Z on Reasonable Doubt. I love this album. I have no business loving it. New York State of Mind Part Two is on here, which I love. Maybe slightly more than original. Not really, but it's close just because it was my first exposure. Um, Ghetto Prisoners, Rise, Rise, Rise is on here. Uh, yeah, I, I love this album. Uh, so, I mean, it's my mics. So I'm gonna give this. A, I'm gonna give this a three and a half. Love me some I am. Follow that up with Nostradamus, which what happened was I am got heavily bootlegged. That's why it went from a two disc album, which was going to be called I Am the Autobiography, into Nas re-recording a lot of songs. A lot of the songs ended up on the first Lost Tapes. Some of them made it to Nostradamus. Of course, we had the um, the lead single, Nasty Nas to Esco to Escobar. Now he is Nostradamus. Now on the cover, we had Nas, Hoodie Nas with the black hoodie. Um, had some good joints on here that uh, get sleeped on. Like Pro- um, what Project Window, I think, with Ron Osley was on here. He had... Um, uh, the Life We Chose is on here. The beat is not good for Life We Chose, but Junior Tech, DJ Junior Tech, did a blend tape years ago, and he took that and put it over something else, and it was so dope. And I was like, yo, Nas really killed this. The beat just sucks. And we all know how Nas is about beat selection. So so uh, that was on here. Of course, You Owe Me's on here. Uh, an, the song that Jay-Z drug Nas about, um, you know, is it Uchi Wally Wally? Is it One Mic? Is it? Black Girl Lost, a shorty owe you for ice, you know, that kind of thing. Nostradamus was fine. He tried to do the whole DMX thing and put out two albums back to back at the same time. It was it was rough going. He did it, but he definitely did not do what DMX did and come in at number one on Billboard twice. So this is this is fine. Um I, I mean I, I say Nostradamus is probably a Probably a one and a half, two, Mike. I'll, I'll give it a two, Mike, just to be nice. Yes, I left out QB's Finest. It's a compilation album. Yes, I left out Brain Farts. Stillmatic, 2001, featuring Nas in the orange velour track suit. Classic album, five mics. Uh, no one expected him to come back at 
Jay like he did. Uh, Matt was talking to me the other day about how it felt like, um, uh, who, who are we talking about? Were we talking about Versus or, uh, or about KRS-One? And I was talking about how no one ever made KRS humble in a way, you know, because KRS has always had supreme confidence and there's never been anybody who could really say, and I'm sure there will be people out there who will say, sorry, but honestly, I don't know anybody who will say that KRS lost a battle, like for real. And I definitely feel like KRS is in the same boat where they didn't lose a battle. So there's that, of course. <laughs> so KRS is kind of an asshole is, is what it comes to. KRS is an all-time great. I love KRS. He's, he's on my top 20 MCs of all time. But at the same time, he, he's a bit of a jerk because no one's ever knocked him down a peg. Jay-Z came in and knocked Nas down a peg when he dropped TakeOver. So Nas came back and then knocked Jay-Z down a peg when he dropped Ether, which, of course, made Jay-Z immediately respond with uh, Super Ugly. And then your homegirl uh, did uh, Battle of the Beats, uh, 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 Angie Martinez. And then she's like, hey, Ether is Super Ugly. And then everybody said Ether. And then Nas won the battle. No. Nas did not win the battle. Uh, but... Stillmatic's great album has Rewind on it. It has, um, oh, oh man, so, so many great songs. It has Got Yourself a Gun on there. It has One Mic. Uh, it is a very listenable album, and I still love this album to this day. Five mics. Easy. Lost Tapes 2002. One of the most cohesive Nods projects, even though it was a bunch of leftovers that didn't make it on IM pretty much. Five mics. You listen to do rags and then go all the way through, man. It's it's a classic album. You can't you can't deny it. You can't deny it. I'm a straight rider. You don't wanna bang with me. Godson 2002. I love this album as well. My homie Wes had this. We were roommates, and I listened to it, and I immediately fell in love with it. Um, not as favored in most circles as Stillmatic or Illmatic. But I do really enjoy this. Plus, he was going through the death of his mom, which I can relate to very heavily now. Um, but I just really thought it was a, a nice, authentic look at uh, who Nas wanted to be and continue to be after the after all the the uh, heat had died down from Stillmatic. So, Godson, shirtless Nas on the cover, um, and uh, yeah, I just I just really find that album to be good. So I'm, I'm gonna give Godson a four and a half, honestly. Streets Disciple 2004, Last Supper Nas, when he recreated the Last Supper with a bunch of himself. Interesting cover choices again, Nas. And Streets Disciple was very good. Okay, no, I didn't mean that. Streets Disciple was very bloated. <laughs> very bloated, very big. It was a double CD. So you, you're going to get that, of course. Um, As far as, uh, you know, uh, good songs. I mean, he, he had the uh, song with his dad on there. And, oh, Made You Look was on here. Made You Look was on here. One of the best Nods records is on this album. And it just gets lost in the sauce. And that's crazy. No, Made You Look was on Godson. Made You Look was on Godson. I'm sorry. Um, well, I think he had the Virgo was on this album. And uh, these are our heroes. He called Kobe a coon. <laughs> that was interesting, Tom. Uh, I just thought this album was too big. Uh, never really made a big impact on me. It was nice to have a Nods album that was that long. But honestly... Uh, th this is not, this is not what's hot in the streets. Uh, I, I give Streets Disciple a solid three mics just for effort, really. Hip Hop is Dead, loved it when it came out in 2006. You got Black Rose Nas throwing the rose on Hip Hop's grave. Me and Shiv were crazy about this album for many years. Uh, it has not aged well, however. Um, still has some, some bright spots, but as you can tell, I can't even think of any songs off of it other than that awful um, awful um, investigator voice Nas is trying to do like yeah see like, he, he was trying to do that and I thought it was so dope back then uh, hip, uh, hip Hop was it was on there which was a, a pretty decent record um, Hip Hop just died this morning and is dead and of course uh, Black Republican was on here as well uh, Hip Hop is dead is definitely probably about a, a two and a half if I'm willing to go Streets of Sight, no, Streets of Sight was a two and a half. So this is a, this is a three, Streets of Sight was a two and a half. Untitled, we have Scarred Nas with the lashed N on his back. Originally, it was supposed to be called Nigger. It came out in 2008. 
At the time, again, this is an album that I went crazy for with Shiv. Thought it was one of his dopest, most political pieces of work. Thought he was doing an amazing job as far as being political and talking about the fact that sl- that racism still alive. They just be concealing it. But again, it has not aged that well. Um, in the moment, I thought it was really great. This is definitely a, a, th- a three album. I don't think it's any better than that. I don't think it's any worse. Um, also, I remember he had that um, uh, hero song, like which kind of contradicted the whole album, but he had to try to sell records. Then we had 2010's uh, Nas and Damian Marley Distant Relatives album. They're together on the cover. I never thought much of this. I know Shiv enjoyed it a lot. Um, I was more resistant to reggae when I was younger, so I rarely, um, rarely uh, paid much attention. Listen to this. I think I listened to it like once. I was like, oh, that's cool. And I, I kind of never thought about it again. So I can't really give this a proper mic rating. So I won't. We did not get another Nas album until Life is Good when we had Green Dress Nas holding the dress that Khalees supposedly left in his closet after she moved out. This came out in 2012. I loved this album for a long time. I still do enjoy it a lot. I'd say it's a four mic album. Um, this album, of course, had the song for Destiny on it, Daughters. Um, he also had some some other joints. He had the one that, uh, 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 not what is it? Oh, it's right on tip of my tongue. He had the, that one joint that Salam Remy did. Um, he said, Heavy D gave me this. Uh, Heavy D told Salam, give me this to rock to. And it, it was, it, I liked it a lot. I liked it a lot. Um, some, maybe a few beat selections here and there. But I, I find this to be a four mic album. Here's Nazir. Uh, we had the classic uh, photo of the kids against the wall uh, being profiled of black kids. This came out in 2018. Kanye produced this when he was doing his seven his uh, seven, what was it, uh, his seven song albums and stuff. Uh, I thought Nas is often off beat on the whole album, as I said. And yeah, fuck that album. Uh, half a mic for that. Lost Tapes 2. Um, I actually have not listened to this. They have the decaying tape on there. I enjoyed Lost Tapes 1 ver- uh, a lot. I- I'm sure I would enjoy this too. I need to actually throw it in the queue to check it out. So I really can't give this a proper mic rating. Which brings us to King's Disease 1, which was the Red Angels 2020, produced all by Hit Boy, won Nas's first Grammy ever, which is crazy considering Nas has been in the game for since 91, 92. Uh, King's Disease, I thought it was very dope. I thought it was his best work um, probably since Life is Good because I, I really did still like Life is Good. Uh, King's Disease is definitely a four for me. Uh, so four mics for that. So I like that a lot, which brings us to King's Disease 2. Red Nas on the cover, 2021. We got the back-to-back joints. He brought Lauryn Hill out of retirement on this, start to finish. It's the five mic album, so Nas has at least three classics to his name. King's Disease 2 is dope. And I would love to see Nas repeat as best rap album. Probably not going to. He has some stiff competition out there, and I'm not talking about Donda or Certified Lover Boy. Um, I enjoyed both of them, but I don't really have much to say about those past that. So there, there you go. Uh, Kings of Z's two is actually an amazing album and I recommended it to the homies from the rock, which is a uh, shout out to my boys, Ed, Matt, Steve, Wes. Uh, and I was like, yo, have you guys listened to Z- Kings of Z's two? And, uh, and Steve's like, yeah, I've been listening to that joint. Matt's checked it out. And Matt says he keeps going back to it and listening to it over and over again. Cause he's so impressed with it. And Steve says he listens to it a lot as well. But it, it's a very, it's, I can't believe we got this cohesive of a Nas album in 2021. I, I just didn't think that's, I didn't think that's the energy he would be bringing. So I don't know if we're going to get a King's Disease 3 next year. I, I'd be all for it. Like I said, I hope he gets recognized at the Grammys again for this. It's an extremely great album. So first recommendation, go check out King's Disease 2. All right. So we're going to switch gears now, and I don't have any more visual aids. I'm sorry, but I checked out Mac Miller's 2014 project Faces finally, and I'd started it last year because I actually written a piece about this. And if you want to check out the piece, it's actually on my uh, website. It's hyphen universe slash notebook. I wrote about how I missed out on Mac being alive, how I enjoyed his music while he's alive, but I didn't appreciate it as much while he was alive. I'm actually in the middle of a deep dive 
going through his discography since watching movies with the sound off. And I stopped for faces when it came out to digital because I, last year I started, I downloaded it and started listening to it and I didn't finish it and I enjoyed it then. I was really impressed. And now getting to listen to it on digital and go all the way through, man. Uh, it's probably my favorite Mac Miller project, uh, ever. Now, I haven't completed Swimming or Circles. I have not listened to those albums yet. Uh, bef- I'd say before... I really thought... I Not that I thought. I really liked watching movies with the sound off, but I didn't... I don't know how, because when I just re-listened to it, I appreciate it way more now than I did then, if that makes sense. Uh, so, But again, it, it's the whole it's the whole thing that he's gone now. So you, you read more into his lyrics. You're listening more to the melodies and the sounds you're not just all right this mac miller album came out let's let's play it you know it's like let me actually hear what he was really trying to do because one thing that i learned as i look at my pile of nice shit all over the floor one thing that i've learned about music uh in the last year or so i've actually really missed music and i had been so caught up in the world of podcasts and it was always Listen to this podcast, listen to that podcast, listen to this podcast, listen to that podcast, listen to our, our podcast. And I decided at the top of the year, I was going to make a playlist on Spotify because uh, I have premium. And I was just going to put albums into it, whole ass albums. And then I was just going to start listening to the albums. And whenever something caught my ear or I saw something, I would throw it in there. So I would ran across, and I wish I knew who it was, I ran across this one TikToker. He gave me like six different artists and albums to check out, and all of them joints were fire. Um, anything new that came out got thrown in there, uh, like the J. Cole. I did stop to listen to J. Cole, but J. Cole's in there. Uh, Big Sean, I think, I actually listened to on my own. And Detroit, too. Let me just, real sidebar, I was a little disappointed with that, which is crazy because me and Matt were just talking about his L.A. Leakers freestyle that he that he did, and that thing is incredible, start to finish. But listening to Detroit, too, it's, it's too long, and – it's not the same feeling as Detroit one, uh, which arguably could be his considered big Sean's best project. Uh, but it's really kind of let me focus back in on just list, being a music fan. And one thing that I've come, I've come to decide, I know I'm sitting here rating Nas albums and telling y'all what I like and don't like about music right now, but every, I, I've really become feel like I, that everything, everybody has an opinion, obviously just like assholes. But I've gotten real subjective about people's opinions on things. So I actually saw a post from a, a friend of mine, and he had said something along the lines of, uh, it was my man DJ Hollywood, he's been on the pie before. He had said something about, um, it doesn't matter which album's better, Donda or CLB, just be glad both of these artists gave us dope projects, blah, blah, blah. And then a friend of a mutual friend of ours got in there. It's like, like, Oh, don't lie. Tell the truth. And I was like, all right, whatever. And then he put a post up. He's like, I listened to Don to and CLB. And I think they were both, I didn't really like them at all. You need to go listen to, the, to these artists, blah, blah, blah. Now he's always been an underground champion and everything, but it just hit me the wrong way, man. It's like one on social media, man, especially Facebook. I take everything. All you motherfuckers say with a grain of salt. I don't give a shit. I don't. I mean, you tell me the sky's falling. I'm like, you fucking lying. (laughs) You better read that article again. Make sure that shit's right before you tell me the sky's falling, man. (laughs) I'm just being honest. But, you know, and and I'm even like that with, I was turning to movies and film and stuff. And it's like, I I enjoy listening to Cat and Mark and their takes on movies. um, Because I respect their opinions a lot. Um, But, like, when it comes to... Like, oh, man, I didn't like this movie or this movie or anything else when it's not from them. Or, you know, it's like I I just want to kind of see it for myself. Like, I want to listen and and be my own judge. So so I I don't even know if I have any interest in, um, like, uh, we haven't done, me and Mark Rob haven't done a Marvel uh, pod in a long time since, obviously, honestly, since uh, Far From Home came out, I think was the last one we did. Of course, the, the, um, the panty showed up and kind of delayed everything. But I mean, with all the Marvel shows and stuff, we had talked about it, but Marcus wasn't really watching it. And now I'm just kind of like, you know, I don't even know if I want to seek this shit. Like, I don't even know if I want to break down like all the stuff that we used to 
and everything. And it's not for lack of interest. I still love the shit. I love all the MCU stuff so much. Um, and I'm not against having small conversations, but I don't know if I want to, if I'm in the, if I have the bandwidth for massive conversations about these movies anymore. Uh, so I don't even know if we would, we'll do that anymore next time we get together, you know, and that's fine. Cause you know, I, I take what I like out of them and Marcus takes what he likes or dislikes out of them and we keep it moving, man. Uh, we can both agree that, uh, that, uh, Metro, uh, starring Eddie Murphy is a great movie and y'all should all go watch that shit right now, even though I bet you it's not on streaming, but <laughs> anyway, back to faces. Uh, I, I was just like, I'm going to find this to this album. And of course, musically, and I, again, I started swimming, Mac died. No, Mac died, had never listened to swimming, started swimming, couldn't do it, stopped. Never came back to swimming. Circles came out, listened to the first song or the first video, started crying. <laughs> Big surprise, right? And never went back. But now I got it all lined up in, for the discography and everything so that so uh, I, in my playlist, so I, I can kind of go from start to finish. And I'm up to live, live from space, the live album. I'm really enjoying that. But the very first words on, on Faces should have died already. Faces. And the, the themes of everything that, that Mac was going through at the time, especially coming off of watching movies with the sound off, and then, he, he, like, this is before he his next project would end up being uh, Good AM, I believe it was called. It's like G-O-O-D colon A-M. So Good AM. And Good AM I thought was fine. It didn't really move me that much other than that. Um, it didn't really move me a lot. I know Divine Feminine was a big album for Mark Robb, and I can't wait to re-listen to that because I've been listening to Hyphenation pods in between. Also, go listen to We Should Do This Again Sometime with Cat and Mark and follow them and subscribe. And the Shredhead Pod, make sure you do that. And the Rasselcast Power Hour, make sure you do that. Okay? Um, Because they're all dope. Hyphen Podcast Squad, you'll never take us down. Shout out to Malachi. But... It's a it's a very haunting album. Rick Ross is on there. Very cool. Mike Jones comes through. Very cool. Uh, apparently, Mac was on all the drugs at the time, and he wasn't afraid to say it. And to know of his untimely passing now, just it makes you sad in a way, but it gives you a, a creepy appreciation for what he was able to do. So Faces is my favorite Mac Miller album. That's a five mic album for me. Uh, no question. So Mac Miller, you get five mics for faces, bro. Hope you hope you enjoy that. Um, so so yeah, checked out faces. And before I uh, jump into this last one, I want to talk about before we get out out of here. I um lo- lost someone else close to me uh, here last Monday. Actually, it was ironic because I lost this guy uh, Corey Jathara on Monday. Then I sat down here to record uh, the Derek episode not that long after. So I was going through the motions of losing Corey and Derek at the same time. I uh, met Corey in 2005 when I went to my first Sound Vision show here in Morgantown. Sound Vision is the music collective that I do music with, featuring the likes of 66240, a.k.a. Jumbo Green, uh, DJ Moss along at the helm of it, 227 Digital Masters, um, Paycheck Game, Big Chief, Ace Beans, Johnny Harmonic, Corey Jathara, of course, uh, myself, I'm I'm in Sound Vision. What up, though? Uh, Fire Squad, uh, a, a breezy. Shout shout out to everybody in the Sound Vision family, man. But uh, got the text from E on uh Monday that Corey was laying on the couch complaining of uh some stomach issues to his uh to his girl, and she had went to bed thinking nothing of it, and then she found him next morning and she thought he had a seizure, but he he's gone now. So he's being laid to rest in Virginia this Saturday, and unfortunately I won't be able to make it. So. Corey, man, I love you, and um, we're going to do the memorial here, hopefully in November, December, man. We're going to do it real big for you, and um, you're just a real genuine, honest guy, man. Genuine, good guy. Hell of a musician. Like, I heard music at 123 Pleasant Street the other night that I never heard, because it was with Corey's band before he was in Sound Vision, before he was friends with with E, and oh, wow, such such a talented musician, man. Funny guy. Give you the shirt off his back. Beloved parent. Uh, yeah, so 
Uh, shout out to you, Corey, man. It sucks. Um, but I, I just wanted to take a moment to discuss that, especially coming off of, uh, I mean, talking about Mac, losing Mac, and then actually knowing Corey personally. It's it's been a it's been a rough week, man. And then uh, getting ready to get ready for uh, Bonnie's anniversary, man. My stepmother uh, here on the ninth. Sorry, the um, seventh. The ninth is when my mom Barbara passed away, which is in October. So rough time of year, but uh, we gonna make it like Jada Kiss, man. So speaking of music, let me talk about this one other album that I just listened to. Just came out last Friday. It's by Wale, Florin 2. Gave it a listen, and I was floored. Four and a half mics. Like, I'm using this app now. It's actually called uh, Music Board, and it's kind of similar to Letterboxd uh, that Kat and Mark talk about on their pod. And Letterboxd is a, lets you review movies, and uh, it's a rating system, and you can review movies, you can make your own list and stuff. It's actually pretty cool. So I started using it. And then I was like, do they have a music version of this? So Music Board is the closest thing that they have to uh, to being able to write music and write reviews and make lists. So it's a four and a half stars on my music board or four and a half mics on here. And Florin, Wale just put his foot in this, man. The Wale project I've enjoyed the most since The Gifted. And The Gifted is my favorite Wale album. I'm not scared to say The Gifted is worth five mics to this day. It still holds up. And I enjoyed every listen through. Um, subsequent albums since then, like the um, album About Nothing, I thought that was cool. Um, didn't really move me like The Gifted did. Uh, Shine, I was really excited for that period in Wale's career, but the album disappointed me. I felt like his... And it wasn't the singing, man. I just, I, I just wasn't in the right vibe. Plus, I was listening to it at Disney World when we were there a few years ago. So maybe it wasn't the right mood, but... Um, never, never been, I was a big fan of Shine, and of course he got dropped in, put out a couple EPs, which I thought were cool, um, and uh, the funny thing about Shine is he had put out the mixtape, the, the Sunset mixtape, Sunset on, uh, Will, uh, I ain't gonna even try, um, whatever the mixtape was with the, uh, Grand Theft Auto stuff on, I listened to that mixtape, and I was like, yo, this mixtape is hella dope, and now it's time for podcast the one-on-one, because I, I just got to I just went through Wale's discography. Summer on Summer on Sunset is what it was called. I listened to that either I think it was after Shine. And I was like, "Yo, why couldn't Shine be more like this?" Um, so it's almost like he busted his nut on the mixtape rather than the album, which which is okay. It, it happens. Uh, came back after the EPs with Wow, that's crazy, which came out like right before the pandemic hit. Um, I thought Wow, that's crazy was a, a decent album. I gave it. Uh, three and a half stars on the um, music board. And then for Lauren though, man, I, I I don't know what it was, but from start to finish, man, like he, he just really got in there, man. Like every track just went for me. Everything worked like Tiffany Nike's is dope. Poke it out. Of course, a single with J Cole caramels, dope fluctuates, dope light years with my man Ross on it. And y'all know how I feel about a little Ricky Rosé. Rosé! Yeah. Uh, Dearly Beloved's a real cool song uh, featuring Jamie Foxx. More Love is cool. Jump In and Down South are both nasty. Nasty. A little homophobia on, uh, I think that was on uh, Down South. Uh, from, uh, from, it was on the guest rappers. But it is hip-hop. That is to be expected. I, I don't think Wale uh, uh, advocates for that. Certain things that were said. It was mo- but, you know niggas be rapping <laughs> that's pretty much all it is niggas be rapping and I, I just thought it was really good man and I even put in my review I, I said his best project in years from the first listen so I might go back to this and feel a little differently about it but uh go check out Falarin 2 man I barely remember Falarin 1 to be completely honest with you I know it's on streaming services but I don't really remember anything about it let me let me look at it right quick let's use the discography function on music board i thought the artwork was dope but like just looking at the track list like none of these are are really jumping out at me i don't think my man had a song called the one-eyed kitten song i threw it in the on the currently 
uh, playlist. So eventually I'll get to it. I got so much music in there, man. It's not even funny. It's not even funny. But you know what? I love music. And then, oh, 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 oh. Somebody like my, my Jay-Z list. That's what's up. Yeah, so check out Music Board, man. If you're into rating music and and uh, writing some reviews and stuff, it's it's real cool too. So that that's what I came to talk about today. I wanted to talk about uh, King's Disease 2 and Faces and Florin. I know I spent more time on Nas, but that was an idea that I just turned into a whole ass video. So or, it was part of video, but I just threw it on the pod. Why not? Here we are. So say all that to say this. The power of positivity is real. Get that negativity out of your life. No matter what it may be, no matter what you have to do, you got to do you. That's right. I mean that. I mean that. So having said that, make sure you're having genuine interactions with people because you never know when your kindness uh, could save someone's life or someone else's life. You just never know. So always try to have genuine, kind interactions with people. Um, Always try to do that. Give people their flowers while they're here. As you just heard, I just lost a, another friend, Corey Jathara, last week. And I last saw Corey in Lowe's last year. We were masked up. And he's like, hey, what's up? We talked for like three minutes. And I wish I had known it was going to be the last time I was going to see him, man. But, uh, Corey, I hope you know how much you meant to me, brother. Um, I hope you're resting well and your family misses you dearly. So make sure you give people their flowers while they're still here. Call your mom, call your brother, call your sister, call your brother, write your mom an email, call your grandmother, send a telegram to your uncle. Just let your family know that you love them, man. Let them know you're thinking about them. Even if it's just a quick little message, hey, man, I love you. That's it. That's all. You know what? I, I'm going to I'm gonna take, I'll take my own advice right now, and I'm going to reach out to my brother. Shout out to my man, Beamer. And I'm just going to be like, love you, bro. That's it. That's all I'm gonna say. Love you, bro. Cause I, I ain't seen I have not seen him since last year. Uh because he's a, he's in Winchester back home, man. And shout out to him and his family. And love you, bro. That's all you gotta do, you know? Just wanna just wanna let the man know. So make sure you're doing that. Um No apologies to uh Kyrie Irving or to any of you fuck niggas who ain't getting vaccinated. How about that? How about that? <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Fuck Kyrie Irving, man. Fuck him. <laughs> yeah, I said what I said. <laughs> oh, I talk about all this love and positivity and I didn't apply. Like, fuck Kyrie. Fuck them. Fuck them. Yeah. So, anyway, guys, if you want to reach out to the show, B H Y P H E N, B hyphen on Twitter, the B hyphen on Instagram, or hyphen universe on Facebook, B hyphen at gmail.com. If you want to do it through hyphen podcast group, means hyphen pie group on Twitter, hyphen podcast group on Instagram, hyphen podcast group at gmail.com, hyphen podcast group on Facebook. All of those avenues work. Yeah, uh, if you're on iTunes, Apple Podcast, and you're listening, take the time to go ahead and give me five stars, because five stars is dope. Just like I gave out five mics, give me five stars. I'm a five mic podcast, absolutely, 100%. Um, I do want to tell y'all, in case I didn't say last week, I have the Extra Life game coming up on November the 6th. Yeah, start at 8 a.m. on November the 6th. It's going to be 25 hours of gaming that we're doing that day. So... Uh, cause the clocks fall back on at 2 a.m. on the 7th. So it'll be 25 hours of gaming. We are playing for WVU Children's Hospital. All, everything that you donate will be going directly to there. My goal was 2,000. Last year it was 1,000. Uh, and I think it was 1,000. And we did pretty good last year. Uh, I just upped it because I wanted to up it. So come on out. And it's going to be live on my YouTube channel. So hyphen universe. So if you're subscribed, uh, and you hit that bell, you're actually going to get the notification when I go live. You can watch me play games. Be doing it over over at um, Family Friend's House. Family Friend's House, Ivy and BG. This will be their eighth or ninth year doing Extra Life, I feel like. This will be my second year doing it officially. So I'm excited to do that. And I'll be playing some football and some Telltale games and some Spider-Man. And who knows what else? I, I got a whole list. I was working on it the other day. So... 
uh, make, make sure you check me out there, man. I, I greatly appreciate it. Um, but I think that's it. So I appreciate everybody who's listening to the Barack Obama approved world's greatest podcast. I appreciate each and every one of y'all means a lot. I'm happy to be back. It's funny. I really thought this would be like a half an hour episode and here we are coasting in at the 45 minute mark, but it is what it is, ladies and gentlemen. So I say all that to say this. Thanks y'all. Beautiful.